All right, on today's Two on Your Side Town Hall, after a record-breaking weekend of getting vaccines into arms, we take an in-depth look at the effort right here in western New York. Plus, our Verify team answers a common question about what you can and cannot do right after you get your shot. And then later on, one of our legal analysts will join us to talk about the Chauvin murder trial as prosecutors seem poised to wrap up their case. But first up today, New York State hit a bit of a milestone today with the vaccination effort. A quarter of all residents are now fully vaccinated. Yeah, 25.3% to be precise. New York is doing quite better than the country as a whole. There are some hiccups right now, though, especially with the supply of that one dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So let's take a look county by county. We still have a bit of a disparity with Erie County doing especially well above average with almost 41% of residents getting at least one dose. Niagara and Chautauqua counties are right around that state average of 38% of people getting at least one dose. And then you can see our other counties are at least two percentage points below the state average right now. Joining us live right now is Dr. Nancy Nielsen, who leads the planning team for vaccine distribution in our region. She is also senior associate dean for health policy at UB's medical school and a great resource for us. We just love her. We're always glad to have you back, Dr. Nielsen. Thank you, Kate. And we were chatting during the commercial break, and that's why people probably heard that at the beginning of the show. We're all, always chit chatting. Um, let me start by asking you about the vaccination effort right now. We knew that we were going to kind of take a hit because Johnson and Johnson had to discard millions of doses. They had an issue when they were manufacturing it. How many doses are we looking at for Western New York this week? Well, we're, we're looking at a lot less than last week, frankly, and that may be the case for the next couple of weeks. We really don't know because there's a federal supply coming in and then we know what's coming from CDC to the state. And so the CDC allocations that New York gets are what we have access to, but not the rest of the federal allocation. But it's gonna be less and certainly uh, very little J&J and it was sent to hospitals because the idea is the J&J, because &J, it's once and done, if a patient is being discharged from the hospital to a nursing home, it, it makes eminent sense to give them that one shot before they go into the nursing home. We want to stick with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for just a moment um, and a recent headline that I'm sure some of our viewers have seen stories about several states pausing its use due to people fainting and the CDC reviewed that did not find reason for concern. But what do we know need to know about these kinds of issues, the overall safety of the J&J &J vaccine and its use here in Western New York once there's a, a bigger supply again? Well, it's always interesting when you have people who have what we call a vasovagal faint. That's pretty common. Um, you, you know, you, you, you wait, you, perhaps you wait in line for a vaccine, and then without realizing it, you just get really lightheaded and you get swoony, and, and that's the extent of it. That, that is a, a fear reaction more than a vaccine reaction. We see it a lot in other circumstances. So I, you, you, it was looked at by the CDC. The commissioner of health of North Carolina is a friend of mine. So I called her and I said, are you all sure that this can be uh, opened back up in North Carolina? She said, absolutely, absolutely. So four states paused. North Carolina has started using again. And, and I think, you know, we just need to reassure people that these kinds of vasovagal feeling faints are pretty common under stressful circumstances. Absolutely. I read a really interesting article not too long ago about how the news sometimes focuses too much on the negative headline with COVID and not on the positive. When we have you on the show, you oftentimes talk about the positive news, and there is some of that that people may have missed over the weekend with Pfizer um, saying that it is going to soon ask the FDA to approve its vaccine under an emergency use authorization um, for 12 to 15 year olds. Um, it was apparently 100% effective, um, which is really just incredible. Um, earlier today, Dr. Fauci said that he believes it's imminent that they will seek that um, approval from the FDA. Um, I want to listen right now, if we can, to what one of the White House COVID task force members said about how we'll actually get those doses into the arms of teenagers. Listen to this. As it relates to kids, um, there is a well-established 
um, route of vaccinations through the pediatrician's office. It's an important point of trust uh, for parents uh, and teens. Uh, and there's also a, a, a process that's, that for getting childhood vaccinations to pediatricians that's been well established. So we think the FDA is probably going to approve this in short order. What do you think the distribution is going to look like for these 12 to 15 year olds here in Western New York? Well, I think there are going to be some creative solutions. I've talked with the, the local health county health directors. For example, in Niagara County, uh, you, you all have talked with Dan Stapleton, who's the director up there. Uh, they will probably do a drive through uh, at the, the transit drive in because a kid that age, anybody under 18 needs a parent's permission, signed permission. So if a parent drives the kid up, you can do shots in arms and you can do thousands in a day. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, and both should be used by the way, uh, both those mass vaccination approaches and sending vaccine to pediatricians because the pediatricians clearly can vaccinate uh, their their own patients. And if you flood those both of those distribution channels, we can take care of these kids pretty quickly if we just have enough vaccine. It's really important because as you all know, youth sports has been a, a nidus of infection lately in our region. And so it's really important to get these kids vaccinated. I suspect the FDA will do this indeed in short order to amend the emergency use authorization. They don't have to con convene the outside panel. Uh, they don't have to, they may out of an abundance of caution, uh, but they don't have to. So we could actually see this approved for 12 to 15 year olds within a couple of weeks. And finally, Dr. Nielsen, we want to touch a bit on what's been referred to as the third wave of our virus coming through the region. Um, we have the most number of people hospitalized than at any point since February. That trend line is still increasing. And so many people are asking, you know, how is that possible since so many people are vaccinated? Can you respond to that and help understand what's going on here? Yes, there, there are a bunch of things going on and we don't know how much any one of them plays into this, but here are, here are the facts. Uh, the variants are here and the variants, particularly the UK variant is much more contagious. And we've immunized a lot of older people. So the people who are getting sick are the unimmunized who are younger. And, and if you need proof of, of how immunization works, just look at the nursing homes. You remember the tragedies in the nursing homes. Now it's rare to see somebody who's really sick with COVID in a nursing home, and that's because they're immunized. So now people who are gonna get infected are those who haven't yet got, gotten vaccine. So that's why we're working hard to make sure we get it out as efficiently as possible to everybody who's entitled to be eligible for it. Dr. Nancy Nielsen, Senior Associate Dean for Health Policy at UB and leader of the planning team for distribution for the vaccine here in our region. Thanks so much for coming on and helping us understand these kind of myriad topics uh, right now. Have a good night. Thank you, Michael and Kate. All right, we do want to get to an update right now on the breaking news that we brought you first at five of a shooting at a high school in Knoxville, Tennessee, that Kate, we now know was deadly. You're looking live at the scene there. Police say they were called to the school about an hour and a half ago for a report of a man with a gun. And when officers approached, there were shots fired. They say an officer was hit and should survive. A man died at the scene and another was taken in by police. So we don't know if the person shot was the gunman or someone else. Stay tuned for more tonight at 630 on NBC Nightly News. Well, back to the town hall now. Verify team is always getting questions about the vaccine because let's be honest, there's a lot of information out there and it can be very confusing. Yeah, for instance, what should you be doing or not be doing after you get the shot? Evan Kozloff has a verified answer for us. Millions of Americans are getting vaccinated every day, and the Verify team is here to keep you up to date on what you should and shouldn't do after you get that shot. So let's verify. 
How long should you wait to exercise after getting your vaccine? Our sources are Dr. William Moss, the executive director of the International Vaccine Access Center at Johns Hopkins, Dr. William Schaffner, professor of infectious diseases at Vanderbilt University, and Dr. Linda Nabha, an infectious diseases expert at the University of Pittsburgh. They all say that there's no evidence that exercising after getting the shot will have an effect on your immune response. Dr. Moss telling us, quote, one can exercise right after receiving the vaccine and any change in blood flow will not impact the vaccine response. But what about going back to the actual gym? When are you going to be able to go back to your favorite workout spot? You should wait at least two weeks after you get your second vaccine. Um, then we know that your body has produced um, the antibodies it needs to protect you. So we can verify that it's totally fine to work out after getting your vaccine. Just avoid the gym with other people for at least two weeks. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov.